Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do the pick or pass for August's Book of the Month selection. <music> All right, everybody. So it is once again time to go through all of the selections that Book of the Month has made for the month and to see what predictions I got right versus what I got wrong and to see what I added to my box, if anything, or if I decided to skip it for the month. Now, this video, as well as my reading roundup for July, are going to go up a tad bit late just because I had to get my Slayer Fest announcement video up as soon as possible. So I apologize for the delay, but I still hope that you find this video interesting, entertaining, useful in some way. And we are going to go ahead and just jump right in. Of course, we are going to start with the monthly curated selections. And the very first one that Book of the Month selected was The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. This was a prediction that I made for August's Book of the Month. The quick take on Book of the Month just says, what could be more delicious than exes on a food and wine tour trying and failing to prove they're over each other? Now, just as a reminder, if I featured these books in my Book of the Month prediction video, I'm not going to re-go over the synopses or anything like that. You can watch that video if you're interested in learning more or go on Book of the Month's website, however you want to do it. I will try to go a little bit more in depth into the books that I didn't already feature in that book of the month prediction video but luckily the pairing was one that was correct. The next one that they featured is one that I was actually pretty surprised to see, and that was the newest release by Kimberly McCrate called Like Mother, Like Daughter. Now, Kimberly McCrate has been featured on Book of the Month in the past. However, her release prior to this one was not featured. So typically what I've noticed is that if Book of the Month features a couple of releases from an author and then they skip one, chances are they're not going to feature them again. But that apparently is not a hard and fast rule. So I guess we really can't use that as a criteria going forward for selections. I probably will just because more often than not, I do feel like Book of the Month, once they stop featuring an author, they stop featuring that author. But this one was definitely a surprise to see. So this says, when Cleo, a student at NYU, arrives late for dinner at her childhood home in Brooklyn, she finds food burning in the oven and no sign of her mother cat. Then Cleo discovers her mom's bloody shoe under the sofa. Something terrible has happened. But what? The polar opposite of Cleo, whose out of control emotions and unsafe behavior have created a seemingly unbridgeable rift between mother and daughter. Cat is the essence of Park Slope perfection, a happily married, successful corporate lawyer. Or so Cleo thinks. Cat has been lying. She's not just a lawyer. She's her firm's fixer and she's damn good at it too. Growing up in a dangerous group home taught her how to think fast, stay calm under pressure, and recognize a real threat when she sees one. And in the days leading up to her disappearance, Kat has become aware of multiple threats, demands for money from her soon-to-be ex-husband, evidence that Cleo has slipped back into a relationship that's far riskier than she understands, and menacing anonymous messages from her past, all of which she's kept hidden from Cleo. So this definitely sounds like there's a lot of secrets being hidden by both mother and daughter. There's a rift between them, and it sounds like some sinister things are going to happen. There's definitely that complex mother-daughter dynamic. Now, I have read three of Kimberly McCrate's past releases and they have been okay. Nothing super mind blowing. I think I rated them like three, 3.5 stars. So this is one that I was ultimately going to pass on. However, I am doing a project and this one definitely fit for that project. So I had to grab it. This was actually the only release from this month that I added to my box. And it actually worked out because I had a lot of things from the past month already in my box as add-ons. And so I really just wanted to go ahead and get those to me. So I did go ahead and add this one to my box. We also did have Hera by Jennifer Saint, which was one of my August predictions. And it says, in this epic Greek retelling that interrogates power and patriarchy, an oft malign goddess is recast in a new light. So this is that like feminist retelling of Hera. I know a lot of people were highly anticipating this one because they loved her release Ariadne. So I'm really happy to see this here because I know a lot of people were very anxious to get it. This next one that they featured is actually one that I've seen going around a lot. It's called The Wedding People by Alison Espoch and it was contemporary fiction. Now, if I remember correctly, this was a July release. I do remember seeing it around when I was doing my book of the month predictions and my new release video for the month of July. I can't remember if this made it into the new release video. I'm not sure, but I do know that it was going around. It says, it's a beautiful day in Newport, Rhode Island when Phoebe Stone arrives at the Grand Cornwall Inn wearing a green dress and gold heels, not a bag in sight, alone. She's immediately mistaken by everyone in the lobby for one of the wedding people, but she's actually the only guest at the Cornwall who isn't here for the big event. Phoebe is here because she's dreamed of coming for years. She hoped to shuck oysters and take sunset sails with her husband. Only now she's here without him at rock bottom and determined to have one last decadent splurge on herself. Meanwhile, the bride has accounted for every detail and every possible disaster the weekend might yield, 
except for, well, Phoebe and Phoebe's plan, which makes it that much more surprising when the two women can't stop combining in each other. In terms of absurdly funny and devastatingly tender, Alice and S. Box The Wedding People is ultimately an incredibly nuanced and resonant look at the winding paths we can take to places we never imagined and the chance encounters it sometimes takes to reroute us. Now, this isn't one that I added to my box, but I'm kind of enjoying the very character driven aspect of this. It sounds like there's going to be like messy individuals and it's going to be two unlikely women forming a friendship, a bride right before her wedding, and then a woman who was like maybe recently divorced or who has lost her husband and she's going on this vacation she's always wanted to take, only now she's alone. So it definitely sounds like there's going to be a lot of character driven aspects to this story. And so far, I've heard some pretty good things. So this is one that I could be convinced to pick up in the future. And then the final one for their monthly curated selections was Five Star Stranger by Kat Tang, which was one of my book of the month predictions for August. An astute exploration of loneliness, connection, and the gig economy follows everyday life for a stranger for hire. So out of the five monthly curated selections, I got three correct. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and move on into the add-ons. All right, the first add-on was actually the newest release from T. Kingfisher called A Sorceress Comes to Call. Now, I could be incorrect, but I don't believe that T. Kingfisher has ever been featured before on Book of the Month. So this was actually kind of a surprising turn of events, but T. Kingfisher has definitely been gaining in popularity. So it could definitely be that she is featured on Book of the Month in the future, which I think a lot of people would be pretty pleased about. Now, I did feature this in my new release video for August, so I'm not gonna go into the synopsis of this here, but the quick take says, casting a bewitch spell, this Brothers Grimm retelling follows a secretive sorceress and her daughter on the run. If I remember correctly, this is a retelling of The Goose Girl. I think that's what it was. So if you like T. Kingfisher, if you like dark fairy tale retellings, this is definitely one that I think should be on your radar to pick up. All right, and then next they did feature the newest release by Silvia Marina Garcia called The Seventh Veil of Salome. Somebody in my comments on the Book of the Month prediction video corrected my pronunciation of that. So apparently it is pronounced Salome. And this again was one of my predictions. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's says competition is fierce in golden age Hollywood for fame and fortune but are the sacrifices worth the glitz and the glamour. I know that a lot of people are really big fans of Silvia Marina Garcia and so they were probably very happy to see this one there so I'm glad that they featured it for y'all. This next one is definitely one that was not on my radar at all. I had never heard of it before it was featured on Book of the Month. It's called The Days I Loved You Most by Amy Neff. It says in the summer of 1941 on the New England shores where they were raised Evelyn and Joseph fell in love. Now more than 60 years later with a lifetime between them they have gathered their three grown children to share the staggering news. She has received a heartbreaking diagnosis and he can't live without her. So in one year's time, they will end their love story on their own terms. Over the next year, the couple retraces their past, all the joys and regrets that brought them to this moment. They embark on a journey to live out their greatest dreams and to connect with each of their children. But as their final days draw closer, they must confront the stark reality of what's to come and make peace with the legacy they will leave behind for their family. Spanning the 20th century from World War II to 9-11 and beyond, The Days I Loved You Most is a timeless tale of unwavering devotion, a moving tribute to the enduring power of love and a reminder that even in the darkest moments, there is always hope and beauty to be found. I think that that sounds absolutely phenomenally beautiful. And I also think that this is going to be tragically heartbreaking. And I considered picking this one up. And I think ultimately I just kind of decided to spare my mental health. This sounds very, very heavy. Essentially, you have a woman who is dying because of a disease and a husband who is making the decision to end his own life so he does not have to live without her. That is very, very rough. And I do not know if I can emotionally handle this type of story, especially with like certain triggers relating to medical anxiety or just anxiety in general. So I did not pick this up, but I have heard a lot of people who were really anticipating this and I'm looking forward to seeing reviews. I have a feeling it's going to be such a stunningly beautiful love story. This is just not one that I wanted to add to my box. This next one was also one that was never on my radar. I did not know of it at all. It's a romance called Four Weekends and a Funeral by Ellie Palmer. It says the right guy at the dead wrong time. When 30 year old post double mastectomy BRCA1 carrier and reluctant thrill seeker Allison Mullaly arrives at her ex boyfriend Sam's funeral to find that no one knows he dumped her. She agrees to play the grieving girlfriend for the sake of the family and pack up Sam's apartment with his prickly best friend Adam Berg. After all, it'll only take four weekends. But Adam doesn't want Allison anywhere near him. Forced to spend long hours with the grump and his monosyllabic demeanor, Allison decides she must put her people-pleasing abilities to the test. She will make him like her and after awkward family affairs and packing up dilemmas, the two form a tenuous friendship. If friendship means incredible chemistry and tension between them. Can Allison come clean and finally embrace the life and love she's always wanted or will her little white lie get in the way of her new unexpected romance. All right, so that sounds really interesting. You have a woman who was broken up with by this guy who ultimately ends up dying, but his family doesn't know that he's broken up with her. So she has to play the grieving girlfriend. And ultimately it sounds like she's going to fall for his best friend. Definitely sounds a little bit messy. This is another one that I'm really looking forward to reviews on just because that sounds like a wild time. This is definitely one to keep an eye on. And then the next one was a correct book of the month prediction. And that is Hum by Helen Phillips. This is that science fiction one that I mentioned. And it says combining family drama 
drama and an incisive portrait of surveillance tech. This dystopian parable will leave you pondering. This was probably one of the most interesting synopses that I read when I was doing all of the research for the August book of the month prediction. It's not one that I picked up because it's not quite there within my comfort zone. I don't necessarily know if this will work for me, but I'm really looking forward to hearing other people's takes on this one. And then the very final add-on, of course, is the next one from Lori Colwyn called Happy All the Time. If you didn't watch my last pick or pass, we found out that Lori Colwyn actually passed away about 30 plus years ago and Book of the Month has recently kind of discovered her works and are putting her in the spotlight and I believe they are going to release a total of three or four of her books. So this one would be number two. It says Guido and Vincent are childhood best friends, third cousins really, living in Cambridge and dreaming about their futures. Guido plans to write poetry while Vincent feels confident he will win a Nobel Prize for physics. When Guido spots Holly while exiting a museum, he can immediately sense that she will be difficult, quirky, and hard to live with. He loves her on site. Vincent, open-minded and cheerful, meets Misty at work. Though she is a bored and misanthropic brunette, he finds himself desperate to know her. Through courtship, jealousy, estrangement, and other perils, Happy All the Time follows four sane, intelligent, and good-intentioned people who manage to find love in spite of themselves. So this is contemporary, but it sounds like there's going to be romance mixed in. You have two best friends and the women that they're falling in love with. Sounds like it's going to be just a sweet, heartwarming, possibly character-driven time. I haven't picked up any of the Lori Colwins, but I do really like the idea of Book of the Month shining a spotlight on somebody who has been gone for so many years and giving their work a resurgence. You know what I mean? And introducing people, a lot of people today who probably have never heard of Lori Colwyn and giving her work some attention. So I think that's really cool. All right, everybody. So that is it. Those are all of the books that Book of the Month featured as part of their monthly curated selections or as part of their add-on selections. So the only new book from August that I added to my box was Like Mother, Like Daughter by Kimberly McCray. I also had the two Meg Schaefer's in my box, The Wishing Game, which was a release from last year, and then her newest release called The Lost Story. And then I also had House of Glass by Sarah Buchanan. Funny story in that I actually thought that I had that in my July box, but when I got my July box, it wasn't in there. And I realized that my box had already been full when I tried to add it. And so it didn't get added. So I definitely had a pretty full box, but it was only one of the August selections. As always, if you are a Book of the Month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know what you selected for August Book of the Month, or if you decided to go ahead and skip this month. If you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a crown emoji in the comments below to let me know that you were here. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.